Body camera footage has now been released of that deadly police shooting of an airman inside his home. This happened in Florida. <laughs> Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! When tragedies occur, everyone is affected by grief. It becomes worse when it turns out to be a preventable one, as in the case of Roger Fortson, who would still be alive if a cop had stopped to breathe for just a moment. On May 3rd, 2024, the Fort Walton Beach community and Atlanta, Georgia community were thrown in the morning when a trigger-anxious Okaloosa County Sheriff deputy shot 23-year-old Airman Rogers Fortson six times in the chest. Until his death, Roger lived as a regular young adult with hopes of a great future. He didn't just hope, he put in the work to set the gears in motion. Roger attended Ronald McNair High School, where he graduated in 2019. This is a school where not so many people graduate from, but he did and went on to join the Air Force right after graduation. He didn't just want to be a pilot, he also wanted to serve his country. This passion saw him ride to the rank of senior airman and even earned him an air medal with a combat device in a short time. This award is only given after an airman completes 20 flights in a combat zone or achieves a lot in a single mission. He was based at the Special Operation Wings at Hurlburt. Roger was focused on giving his mother, Mecca Fortson, and siblings a life of comfort, and he showed this through his actions. His superiors had great things to say about him. Now, this is the kind of man to be associated with shady deals, certainly not a man with a questionable character. This is a man whose life was cut short abruptly. The Okaloosa County Sheriff officials said the deputy acted in self-defense, while responding to a call of a disturbance at an apartment complex. But a statement given by Roger's girlfriend counters the sheriff's official statement. According to Roger's girlfriend, who is not yet known, they were on FaceTime when he heard someone outside his apartment. He tried finding out who it was, but it seemed like the person wasn't within sight. He called out to whoever was on the other side, and when he didn't get a response, he grabbed his legal firearm and opened the door. Following her statement to his family, Ben Crump, the attorney representing the Forces family, Roger's mom, siblings, and associates, held a new conference where they made the public know that the deputy sheriff made a mistake, but approaching the wrong department so the police department should own up to it and not paint Roger in a bad light. I, we are here at this press conference bec mainly because we had to correct this narrative, this narrative that had been put out there. I mean, Roger Fortson was the best America had to offer. He was a patriot. He was a U.S. airman, special ops. I mean, he was fighting for our way of life. He was fine for everybody. He was Shortly after the news conference, Okaloosa County Sheriff Eric Adden released the body cam videos from the deputy sheriff on the day of the incident. <laughs> Clearly, when the deputy sheriff got to Roger's apartment door, he knocked and moved away from the door, so there was no way that Roger could tell who was at the door. The deputy sheriff knocked again, but this time announcing his presence. Sheriff's office, open the door! Sheriff's office, open the door! Step out. Three twelve shots fired. Suspect down. Do not move. Three twelve got EMS my location. This deputy sheriff didn't even give Roger the benefit of asking him to put up his hand. Self defense come into play only when the life of a cop is threatened. And from the video, we can see that Roger wasn't in any position to shoot. His gun was pointed downwards. He is a black man who lives alone with the police at his door, unprovoked and with military training it can be expected that he would pick up his gun from reflex. Also, the state of Florida recognizes the Fifth Amendment and owning guns are legal. It is devastating that black men are victims of similar actions and it doesn't seem better. How special 
He really was. She's still in shock and disbelief. It's emotional, so you all bear with her. She's going to try her best to tell you about her son and what was lost. Um, his mother, Mika Fortson. Senior Airman Roger Fortson. Roger was given to me as a gift, which later became my co-worker, my baby daddy, my chef, my counselor, my provider. Senior Airman Roger Fortson. Roger was given to me as a gift, which later became my co-worker, my baby daddy, my shelf, my counselor, my provider. My baby was my everything. Roger was my third son. Where we come from, you don't end up where Roger ends up. Roger wanted to show a 16-year-old brother that there was more to life than a gangster rap, killing people, stealing, and making a fool of himself. Roger wanted to show his mom that raised five kids and that didn't know what credit was, how to have something. Roger wanted to put his mama in a house. Roger wanted to show us how to love unconditionally. Roger's family, as expected, isn't taking this news in good faith. His mother, Fortson, described him as her gift. He seemed to have been a breath of fresh air for his family. I look forward to FDLE's findings and the final third party review done by the state attorney's office. We know you have many questions, as do we. But we are confident in our state's agency's abilities to investigate the facts, no matter where they may lead. And we are prepared to take action that is required to best serve our residents, the military community, and our visitors. Transparency and accountability have been our top priorities from day one. We look forward to FDR's findings and the final third party review done by the state attorney office. We know you have many questions, as do we, but we are confident in our state's agency's abilities to investigate the facts, no matter where they may lead. And we are prepared to take actions that are required to best serve our residents, the military community, and our visitors. Transparency and accountability have been our priority from day one. In response to the deputy sheriff's action, the police department held a press conference where the sheriff assured the public that the incident was under internal investigation and that they would ensure that justice is served. Meanwhile, the deputy sheriff, whose identity is currently being hidden from the public knowledge, has been given an administrative leave pending when investigations are concluded. The question that we commonly ask is, why do situations like this occur frequently? Was Roger a victim because of his skin color, or did the deputy sheriff make a avoidable mistake? Until investigations are concluded, we don't fully have the answers to our questions. Hopefully though, this case doesn't go cold like similar cases where the police cover up wrongdoings and point the fingers at the victims. Giving Fortson's the justice that they deserve is the least that the system can do to restore the gift and hope that was been stolen from them.